Hello. You are listening to the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast. We are here to walk with parents on their unwanted journey of child loss, guiding them to a place of hope, light, and purpose, not in spite of their child's death, but as a way to honor his or her life. And now, here is your host, author, speaker, and bereaved parent, Laura Deal. Today's podcast episode is being sponsored by Lester and Kathy Wilfong in memory of their daughter, Jessie Wilfong. Here's what Kathy has to share with us about their daughter. I looked up the meaning of Jessie's name years ago, and it said gift. Jessie was such a gift to me and her dad. She was smart, funny, kind, and beautiful. We are so grateful for the 20 years we had together. She brought so much joy to our lives. Jessie will be gone one year this month, and we are devastated. She would be 22 this year, but is forever 20. Thank you, Lester and Kathy, for sharing Jessie with us and sponsoring today's episode in her honor. Hi, and thank you for joining me today. Do you feel guilty for laughing after your child died? Are humorous things that used to make you laugh no longer funny? How do we get past that? What if we don't want to ever laugh again? Well, today's guest is a laughter specialist who combines it with being a grief specialist. Nancy Weil is a leading authority on the relationship between humor and grief and is known for her energetic, entertaining, and content-rich programs. She runs a national virtual grief support group through her work with the Order of the Golden Rule, an association for independent funeral homes. Nancy is certified as a funeral celebrant, grief management specialist, and laughter leader. She is the founder of the Laugh Academy and the author of If Stress Doesn't Kill You, Your Family Might. Now, Nancy might sound familiar to some of you since she is a returning guest. She was on episode 190. Now, in the talk you're going to hear in just a minute, you'll hear me mistakenly say episode 189, but it was episode 190 that she was on, and it was with the topic of Can Our Children Still Communicate With Us? The link in the show notes will take you to the correct episode if you want to listen to it. All right, let's get to it and play the talk I had with Nancy about laughter and grief. Well, hi, Nancy. Welcome back. Thanks for having me again. I really do enjoy our conversations. Yeah, and we've been having quite the conversation even before we hit record. (laughs) (laughs) I already decided based on what we were talking about before this, I'm going to have you back on a whole nother topic. (laughs) Exactly. We we love our conversations both uh, on cruise ships, restaurants, on the phone, on podcasts. That's right. That's right. (laughs) And I think that happens when like-minded people come together. Yeah, and it's funny because the topic that pulls us together is grief, and yet, you know, grief just brings people together. It just does. It just does. You know, the work that we do helping people through their darkest time, when other people maybe step back because they're uncomfortable, we step in closer, Mm -hmm. and it has changed who we are by guiding people through this, you know, and um Darcy Sims, who some of your listeners may know, spoke about grief for years, would tell the story about a gentleman who was trying to pull some wires and fix some wires in the wall. And he had made a hole and he was trying to fish the wires and hold the flashlight. And somebody came over and he's like, can you help me? Can you hold this flashlight, you know, and and shine it into the, the darkness there so I can see what I'm doing? And she said, everyone needs that person to shine the light when they're yeah. going through the darkness. And yeah. and so hopefully everyone listening has that one person who shines a light for them. And that's the whole point of your 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 work, your mission, your you know ministry right, right. is to shine the light. So the first time you joined me, we talked about can we get signs from our children? And I got a lot of good feedback on that. So I will put a link to that in the show notes if you're listening right. and you missed that one because that was really good. And I know that's a question a lot of us have. So Nancy, we're going to take a different topic now. And part of it is in your bio. And it says that you are a certified laugh leader. Now you just talked about leaning into grief, <laughs> that we help people and shine that light. 
And now we're talking about your certified laugh leader. Do these things connect? What, so what much does that so, mean? but they don't <laughs> seem like they would. And by the time we're done with this podcast, everybody listening will understand that connection between laughter, right? And humor and grief. Mm -hmm. I always say that because I study and speak about laughter, I can also have that balance of stepping into the tears. It's that balance. And when people are grieving, to find that balance between, right, the laughter and the tears is essential to give people permission mm -hmm. to laugh because we feel guilty usually yes. the first time we laugh. And so we're going to talk about why it is necessary to allow this back in. It is incredibly healing. When they say laughter is the best medicine, it's true, right? The more you yes. study it and why are we wired to laugh, right? Across the world, before we talk, we laugh. That's right. true. Wow. I mean, we just had our little grandson here and you can get him to laugh and cackle. He doesn't talk yet, but boy, he laughs. <laughs> and, and little ones laugh with their whole body, right? Yes, their they do. Shake, their little arm shake, their whole face lights up, like everything in yes. them yes. is involved in it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. when we're grieving, we're probably not going to get to that level. Of right, laughing. exactly. But exactly. we can use therapeutic laughter or laughing for no reason. So we don't have to laugh in response to something funny because when we're in you know a really dark place of grief things don't seem funny to us that would have before so right. you know let's get into it let's talk about why am i saying this this is like you were reading my notes because this is like what where i wanted to start because some people feel guilty when they find themselves laughing at something after someone has died and for our listeners specifically our children so let's start there. Can you tell us why it's okay to laugh even when we're in deep grief, we feel shattered, we're missing our child? You know, how can these things go sure. together? You know, the whole therapeutic laughter, just go into it and give let's us, do it. Give us know, the and, stuff here. And remember, sometimes the initial times for that is at the wake and funeral. Yes. Or when you're sitting with the funeral director. And yeah, right. Or your family, you're putting picture mm -hmm. boards and together. Stories come yeah. out. So this happens sometimes very early on. And then continues. And so let's talk about what happens when we laugh. Why is this hardwired into us? Why do we laugh? So I'm going to focus mostly on the things that would help us as we're grieving, right? And the okay. physiological yes. benefits. So one of the things that happens is it reduces our stress. The cortisol levels drop, right? Mm -hmm. And the endorphins, the dopamines, those feel good brain chemicals rise. So we start to feel better. It, it starts to level out the emotions, those wide swings. It, it helps with memory retention because we start to use whole brain thinking. The left side and the right side of the brain start to cooperate and work together. And as we know, when we're grieving, we live by post-it notes because we can't remember it. Right, right, exactly. What helps to start to oxygenate the brain and have whole brain thinking start to kick in. It boosts our immune system. And we know with grief, it is high yes. stress, the immune system depletes. Yes. When we laugh regularly, it actually boosts the T cells and components of the immune system. Mm -hmm. It begins to help us to breathe deeply. We clear out the old oxygen. We breathe, which also can help with um, preventing upper respiratory illnesses because we're actually deep belly breathing. So it's really great for our cardiovascular system. It's really great, you know, for, for our, our health overall as we are taking in these deeper breaths, as we are clearing things out, as we are relaxing our muscles, as we are just feeling into a better feeling place. And I think the number one thing, and we do not talk about this, is it brings us into the present moment now. What I always say is grief is a process of looking forward in fear and look back in regret, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody who's grieving looks forward into their future and sees unicorns and rainbows ever. Right, right. So where do we find relief? Because if we're thinking about our memories, oh, I wish I had done this or if I had only known that, we're looking forward. How am I going to get through this? How am I going to do that? Mm -hmm. Present moment now is the only place we can get a little bit of relief. Mm. And when we are laughing, we are rooted in the present moment. 
Now, this is interesting because that answers a question I haven't asked yet, which I, the question didn't even come up until you were talking. When you're, when you were talking about the benefits, the physical and the mental, the emotional benefits of laughter, I know, especially for parents who've lost a child, we don't want to get better. We just as soon go to sleep and not wake up. Right. And even even to ourselves in our heads, it doesn't make sense. We may have other children. We may have we may have grandchildren. We may have a spouse we love. We may have a job we love. We may have a church we love. Life was wonderful until our child died, and right. all those reasons to live just don't feel like they're reasons to live anymore because our child isn't here anymore. And so it's like I I don't care if my immune system goes bad and I get cancer and die. I don't care if I get COVID and die. You know, right. Let me, you know, right. I, I, I'm not putting on a mask. I don't, you know, so, you know, yeah. that, that was question was forming was what about the people who don't want to have all these things happen? But then you mm -hmm. answered that. And I guess I want to call attention to that because even like you said, forward and back, where do we get any kind of relief for, for right now, for this moment, how can I get through this? And if nothing else, laughter will get you through this moment, this right. day. And, and, and I want to talk a minute about what you just brought, brought up, because I call that passive suicide, mm. right? I just don't care. Right. Uh, or what I refer to it as death by donut, right? So if you're diabetic, <laughs> exactly. and you're like, I'm going to eat exactly. donuts. I'm going to eat everything I want. You know, yes. some people, I'm just not going to take my medication, exactly. you know, whatever that is. I, it, there's a difference between... I'm going to take my life, right? I'm going to kill myself. Mm -hmm. I wish I were dead. You know, mm -hmm. true suicidal ideation, we need intervention, mm -hmm. right? We need help. We need to call that support line. We need to talk to somebody. Yes. But oftentimes it's more the despondency that yes. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I remember a quote, I think it's by Robert Frost. It says, everything I know about life, I can sum up in three words. It goes on. Oh, wow. Yes. And that's where we get to, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I'm okay if I, you know, like, like you said, I'm okay if I don't wake up tomorrow. This is too mm -hmm. painful, right? Right. But at a certain point, whether it's with therapy, support groups, faith, whatever that is, we realize we have a decision to make because we're still here. Yes. What are we now going to do? I call that, you know, next chapter living. How am I going to write my next chapter? For you, it was forming this entire ministry, going on the road, sharing hope with others. And your daughter comes with you on all of it, right? Mm -hmm, right. And so we don't know at that moment, what is that road going to look like? What is that chapter going to look like we're going to write? Mm -hmm. I can tell you 20 years of working with people, that chapter does get written. Yes. There is hope. There yes. is something that changes. So when we talk about laughter and grief, it's therapeutic laughter. It's how do I use this as one of my tools that I can use to cope and make it through today, through this moment. Is there more you can talk about this therapeutic laughter? Sure. I gosh, yeah. So <laughs> silly question. <laughs> yeah. and we all know that was question, just a lead right? in. Nancy can talk about this all day. <laughs> well, because we think about laughter as in I went to see a comedian, I'm watching right. my funny TV show. And we can do all of those things. But when we're really deep in grief, it's like we're not laughing. Like I know mm -hmm. my brain's going, that's funny. We would have laughed at that before, but it's not. So therapeutic laughter is laughing for no reason. It's just making that sound and using laughter because the brain doesn't completely differentiate. It does to a certain extent, but it's a burst of air that repeats, right? <laughs> brain goes, I'm uh -huh. laughing. So mm -hmm. some of those benefits we just talked about start to take place. So we can laugh for no reason, right? Mm -hmm. That's therapeutic laughter. The amazing thing with research is when we are in that tough time and we're watching that funny show that we always used to watch and laugh and laugh at. And I tell everybody, watch that show on those dark moments. Because even though we're not laughing, because we just can't get there, the brain is saying, that's funny. Hmm. And it's starting to release some of those benefits we talked about. And, and that was amazing when they showed that in research. We don't have to be physically laughing for the brain to still recognize what we find funny, right? What is that humor that we find? So there's three ways to look at it, right? The silent recognition, that's funny. The 
therapeutic laughter laughing for no reason or the spontaneous laughter that does happen. Yeah, and we all know, yeah, Yeah. we all know, we've all done it where we start laughing at something and all of a sudden we can't quit and we're crying and it's like, but this wasn't that funny. And we're just, we can't quit laughing. We may even be wetting our pants laughing, you know, and we just, we're crying and everybody's just looking at us. That's because we're relieving stress, isn't it? Exactly. So it is the greatest pressure relief valve around. We somehow know that when we laugh like that, it relieves the stress and the tension. The interesting thing is in research, what they found is when you laugh so hard, you're just crying because something's so funny and you and you cry because you're grieving, those tears have a different chemical composition. I have heard that. And they've Your even body shown knows it. how to release the stress it's under. So that's why I say to people who are grieving, if you feel like laughing, laugh. If you feel like crying, cry. They each serve their purpose. Right? And it would be interesting for the listeners to look up because they even show like the microscope, the tears, the makeup Incredible. of the tears mm-hmm. look different when the tears are based on grief or when the tears right. are based on laughter. There's a whole different makeup within those tears. It's just crazy. And by the way, you mentioned, you know, there's a quote that says, I laughed so hard the tears ran down my legs, right? So it's like, <laughs> yes. why do we tear them? <laughs> and if you remember when I talk about the health benefits, it relaxes our muscles. Mm. Okay. All of our muscles. So <laughs> all, yeah, we, all of our muscles. All of our muscles. So um so sometimes we, you know, we we pee a little bit because we're laughing so hard, but it also helps then with pain relief. Mm. Right? Because yeah. those muscles can tense when they're under yes. pain. I mean, not all pain relief. And don't laugh if you've just yeah, had Yeah, it's funny because usually when, it. when you can finally compose yourself, it's almost like I usually it's like this big sigh. It's like exactly. <sighs> <laughs> you, you just like all jello. of a sudden you just feel yeah, yeah. and you just so feel better <laughs> yes it, yeah it really, it it really does help us you know as a tool and so hopefully already the listeners are realizing that they have permission to laugh because it really does help us to heal mm. yeah right? and it even if even if in hurt. the moment you don't want to heal you will heal you but you will. do in that moment, you always want to feel better. Yes. In the moment, right? you do want to feel you better to know, you, you know, better. how to make it through. And, you know, I have learned in, in my health, you know, going through that time where I just didn't care when I finally did get to that point, like you said, life goes on. And I realized that I'm here, Becca's not, and I have to figure out how to live my life without her by then my health was a mess and you know to try to get all that back has been a lot of work and so if you can take laughter as a tool to help you you know life will go on and you will get to the point where you realize i have to figure out how to do this with my child not here if you can take this tool of laughter and like Nancy said, you know, I also give you permission to laugh. Hopefully you've been laughing through this podcast as we've been talking, right. you know, right. you've been laughing you know, with us. And one it's of the okay. things I say is we don't get through grief by leaving them behind. Exactly. We get through grief by bringing them with us into everything we are and everything we do. Oh yeah. Right. Yes. They're part of us and our journey now. Yes. And they are a part of that now. And mm-hmm. so how do we honor that? And, and, and honestly, for many people, it's like, I don't know, but I will tell you, sometimes it's as simple as what we were discussing. I have a a grief support group I run on zoom and we had our group last night and they were saying, now I get it. You know, when I have someone else in my world that has lost someone, I'm now more understanding of what to say and what they need. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes is your purpose, right? That's okay. Yes. It doesn't yes. have to be some grand foundation. Oh, that's to, funny. Uh, yes. I was just talking about or... a group to that Monday yeah. night and we had this exact same conversation. You know, I tell them, follow the breadcrumbs. It's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. It's just follow the breadcrumbs. Yeah. Just take the little nudges and it does not have to be something big. It can just be there for someone else. Exactly. And, 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 that's really what it's about, right? Mm-hmm. Is, is us reaching out to one another to support and in love. Right. That's and for us, here. it's becoming a grieving parent sharing hope. It's not just Dave and I. Right. That's our whole heart is that all the parents that connect to us become a grieving parent sharing hope. Right. So, yeah. And, and, 
you know, my, my rule is you don't have to grieve alone. Right. That's it. Right. Don't grieve alone. People listening to this are not grieving alone or they wouldn't be listening to this. Right. 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 Get that support, get that help, reach out to others. And someday you'll be that person people reach out to as well. Yes. And you know, when people find some sort of way to bring purpose to their pain, it helps us to heal. Yes. And that purpose can be as simple as listening to someone else who's going through something as well. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. With an understanding ear and an understanding heart. Yeah. Well, Nancy, thank you so much for sharing with us today. I think a lot of those listening needed to hear this. They needed to be given permission to laugh. And one thing I I thought of, I want to throw in here, you were talking about, you know, just randomly laughing just because of the benefits, just making yourself laugh. And I know it's also the same with smiling. Even just smiling does certain things, chemicals in your brain. And so I've even heard, even in your grief, put a pencil in your mouth because it'll, 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 you don't have to feel the smile, you know, just put a pencil in your mouth, make your lips go up and your brain will think you're smiling and it releases these chemicals that help us. You you don't have to feel good to feel better. You don't have to feel feel better. We can use the body's physiology to trick Mm. it. So when we are smiling, we're actually boosting our immune system. And so just that act of smiling, um, one of the things I would suggest mm-hmm. to those who are listening is to create what I call an HPOA, a humor plan of action. So hopefully everybody by now knows laughter is a really great thing to have, mm-hmm. but how it's do we know it, it's not right? dishonoring our child who's no, no longer here. It it's is honoring not dishonoring. And, exactly. And, Humor is different than laughter. Laughter is just a sound. Humor is subjective. What you find funny, what I find funny. My son told me some show to watch on Netflix. Mm-hmm. He thinks it's hilarious. I'm two episodes in going, this is really stupid, right? But to him, it's hilarious. (laughs) Right. So when somebody creates a humor plan of action, it's about what makes them laugh. Mm. And so maybe it's writing down things so that when you hit that really tough time, you can pull that list up and go, okay, I can play with my cat, right? That always makes me smile and laugh. I can watch old I Love Lucy reruns, whatever it is Mm. that I know I find humorous, right? Watching YouTube video of a baby laughing and you just mm-hmm. can't help but to smile when you see that, right? right. So uh, toys that you keep around, little wind up marching bands or whatever it is. <laughs> right, right. What are the things that would get you to laugh that, as we said, even if right now it's not getting you to laugh mm-hmm. by just exposing yourself to that brings that um, benefit in some way to you. Mm-hmm. So being able to have a plan of action, because it's not going to just happen. Right. We have to know this is important. I don't feel like it. So what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And looking at ways that we used to find, you know, things that were humorous to us and how can I still bring those into my day now, yeah. today, podcasts yeah. that are by your favorite comedians, whatever that mm-hmm. is that we can surround ourselves with can really be helpful. I mean, I'm a big animal lover and I don't even necessarily have to bring my dog, but I could hang at a dog park and just pet a lot of dogs. And just, it makes me smile to watch Uh all these dogs and their joy running and playing. Right. Uh Right. So you don't even have to have an animal to have that. And so watch fainting goats. They're hilarious. Oh my gosh. (laughs) My sister-in-law adopted some fainting goats. They are hilarious. she wouldn't yes, let there is such down. a thing as fainting goats. If you've never heard, look it up on YouTube, fainting goats. Yeah, they start on boom, they're over. But she's like, no, we can't scare them. I go, but that, like, that's like, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's exactly, you watch fainting goat videos. I mean, things like that. So that humor plan of action can be really important right now because we're not going to find it spontaneous, the laughter, You right? know, it's interesting because when you said that, it's not going to just happen. And my immediate thought was, well, but it does. But then I thought, but it doesn't because at the beginning we isolate ourselves and because we're so I guess depressed and in our grief people around us are not going to do well some people might try to make us laugh (laughs) but as a whole people are just going to give us our space and so yeah we do need to make a plan well and that's it and I think we have to also look at when that memory comes up and we're laughing about something, you know, of a time we shared or something, you know, funny that our child did, whatever that is. And we're actually laughing. It feels really foreign, but good. And it's like, now you have permission to have those memories, Mm -hmm. right? Even though they're now 
bittersweet. Right. Right. But as you're sharing sometimes with someone else, you do laugh at that, right? You Mm -hmm. do laugh at some of those stories. And I remember in my research study we did about how we use humor to cope, a brother and sister had gone to visit their parent, their mom had died and they went, you know, a few weeks later to visit the grave. And as you know, when they put the dirt on and then it sort of starts to sink mm-hmm. and they had cemetery and planted grass yet. So it's sort of, you know, sunk. Right. And, and there was like a hole and the sister turned to the brother and she said, I think mom's trying to, to dig her way out to go get some cigarettes down the street. <laughs> and they just laughed <laughs> because their mother was such a, you know, a mm. big chain smoker. Mm. And that's what occurred to her. And then uh-huh. it made them laugh standing at this grave, which can be right. so difficult yes. to do. And just the thought of their mother. And so sometimes that absurdity, even those comments, yes, is that pressure release, right? To have us, to have us laugh. And, mm-hmm. you know, you and I were just talking before we hit record and we'll do another story on it. <laughs> Yes, we <But> will. <laughs> sometimes people say things and I call it unskillful. We'll do a whole show on it. Mm-hmm. But sometimes they try to tell a joke to cheer you up. Mm-hmm. And it's not always appropriate, right? right. You're trying right. to say something. And it can be hurtful in a way. And we need to look past that, right? Yes. Because they don't know what to do. So they want to try and cheer you up and say some funny comment or, you know, example in my research study, a young widow was at her husband's wake and a friend came, you know, a friend, somebody was at the wake and came up to her and said, well, at least you look good in black. Oh now, my word. I looked at that comment and I'm like, well, that's the name of a book for me to write, right? <laughs> comments. But then I thought about it. Mm. And if this was her best friend and they always went shopping together and she always was buying black because it's flattering on me and I like the Mm. look. And they had this backstory of that. And then that friend came over and said, well, at least you look good in black. Now it would have been appropriate. Yes. That humor, right? Mm. We can misuse it unintentionally or it could be an understood story between people. Yes. Right. Right. And so it's subjective of who is saying that comment Mm -hmm. as to whether or not. Right. Right. And I'm sure people are thinking about right now things that people had said. Mm -hmm. But again, it's it's okay to bring some humor and laughter back into our life. I took my grief support group one time to the improv comedy club. It was clean humor. It's called comedy sports. They have locations around the country. And it's improv comedy, but it's it's clean humor. Mm-hmm. So I brought them. And at the end, a woman came up to me and said, that is the first time I've actually laughed since my husband died. Mm-hmm. And it felt so good. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. does. We know because of everything we just discussed. It, right. it does help. It does work. And now you know it can be planned or unplanned. It can be intentional or unintentional. But it really does help us to use humor, to use laughter and bring that into our toolbox, even though that seems like the complete opposite. Well, we actually met, I'm going to wrap this up here. Mm -hmm. We actually met on the previous grief cruise and you actually did a workshop on laughter. And I think this next cruise, you're going to be doing a workshop on laughter yoga. Is that what I'm seeing over here? No, I think we're going to be doing some laughter yoga exercises, uh, like an actual, so we can talk about laughter like this, Mm -hmm. right? But laughter club, I trained through world laughter tour. If anybody's interested, you can take the courses online world laughter tour with Steve Wilson. That's who I trained with many years ago. Mm -hmm. And we use laughter exercises. So maybe you're walking around like your penguins and you're laughing or you're pretending you're eating a big bowl of spaghetti and you're laughing or you're shoveling snow and laughing. Like we're doing activity using imagination, right brain, with the sound of laughter, right? So yoga is, is sound and movement and sound and movement. We're using these exercises to just use the sound of laughter. And generally that leads to authentic laughter, right? Okay, As you're doing sure. exercises. Uh-huh. They can be done seated. You don't have to be standing. So they're, they're uh, mobility appropriate for anybody. And so we do these exercises and I ran the only laughter club held at a cemetery anywhere in the world. <laughs> I used to say, you know, usually when people come to a cemetery, it's not to laugh. 
Mm-hmm. And it actually got me an audition on America's Got Talent because they were looking for laughter leaders. I didn't oh, get on really? the show. Oh, I'm good, but I have no talent, <laughs> but I did that. And at the end, people would say, I just feel better. I feel relief. Mm-hmm. I smiled for the first time. Like it works to do mm-hmm. these laughter exercises, actually put you into all those things we just talked about. Mm-hmm. And people would find that relief. That mm-hmm. and sometimes we just need that momentary respite from that yes. overwhelming, yes, crushing emotions, right? Right. Of grief. right. And right. and that can bring it. So yeah. So I think we're going to actually run some laughter sessions, which will be so much fun. So if you're already booked to go on the cruise, you've got a little taste of <laughs> of some of what Nancy's going to be sharing. You've also got, I think, a session, My Inner Child and the Importance of Rituals. If you're not booked on the cruise, check it out. And the cabins that are low priced for our group, it's not the entire cruise is a grief cruise. It's just we have a small portion of it, you know, grief seminar. And it's in a wonderful atmosphere, relaxing, warm places, being with people who get it. It's just a wonderful, wonderful wonderful experience that you just can't, you can't describe it. You can't compare it to anything. It's very healing to help you move forward in whatever loss you've had. It's not just for uh, bereaved parents. Check it out. And our website to do that is gpshope.org slash cruise. So you can find out more about it. And the lower price cabins are going to be released June 1st. So check it out like right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Whereas amazing. you might only have like one more day <laughs> to get yeah. on, on the low prices. But right. Nancy, how can people get a hold of you if they want to connect with you? So you can go to the website, which is the laugh, L A U G H, the laugh academy.com. You can, you know, just reach out at nancy at the laugh academy.com and email me. I always say, once I meet you, I never leave you, but I don't stalk you. So if you all need more information about this, just let me know and reach out and send me an email and do have, you know, certain resources and and audio recordings that if people are interested in on my website, but I can give you a discount code so you all can just download different audio recordings on Inner Child, on Laughter, on Stress Relief. So if people are interested, they can email me and I'll send them a discount code and download those from the store on the website. Okay. And we'll put all of those links in the show notes in case you didn't catch them verbally, audibly, whatever. (laughs) So Nancy, any last thoughts you want to share? Maybe something like one tip for hanging on for just one more day in the listener's grief journey. I think sometimes the one thing that I would say is breathe. Mm. breathe sometimes when we are feeling this overwhelm just stop and take some deep breaths and recenter ourselves you know Mm -hmm. reground a little bit just bring that in again and and feel what you're feeling you know don't push it away bring it in and feel it and ask it you know what lesson does it have for me you know, what do I need to learn from this? What, why have you come to visit at this moment in my day? Because I'm telling you right now, people are like, you know, well, I'm grieving all the time. You're not. Mm-hmm. Throughout the day, our emotions are constantly shifting, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And so whatever we're feeling, welcome it and, and, and just be with it for a moment. Mm-hmm. And breathe through it, right? Use these tools that, that are presented to you to help you to go from where you're feeling to a little bit better feeling place because we can shift Mm -hmm. into a better feeling place using these kinds of tools. Mm -hmm. They do help us at those moments. And so there is always tools to use. There are always things that can be there to help you to feel better, including other people. Yes. Right. And so always reach out and never grieve alone. Uh, Well, thank you, Nancy. I look forward to seeing you in October on the cruise ship. I do too, Uh, very much. So did you laugh at all while we were talking? How about an occasional smile, whether it was on your face or just in your heart? I hope our talk encouraged you to not allow your grief to keep you away from the needed healing of laughter. 
I think having a humor action plan is a great idea. And I hope as soon as this episode is done, or even right now, put this on pause and pull out a piece of paper and pen and put a plan together, even if it's just three ideas or options of things that have the potential of bringing anything from outright laughter to a tiny smile in your heart to help you get through the day or the moment. Of course, I have to put another plug in for the Grief Cruise. I think you can tell that this is not a morbid time, but it's an opportunity to be with others who understand what it's like to experience deep loss and grief in a warm atmosphere, literally, of relaxation, beauty, entertainment, and being totally taken care of and pampered by the crew of the ship. Plus, you'll get to spend a week with Dave and myself and others like Nancy. I decided to bump up this episode a week from when I had originally planned. In the interview, I said by the time this episode is released, you might only have a day or so to get in on the lower price cabins by something like $1,100, but I wanted to give you more time than that. So like I said, I bumped this episode up and don't wait, check on it. Go to gpshope.org slash cruise, C-R-U-I-S-E, to find out more details, including you can watch a short video of the last grief cruise that Dave and I were part of as well. I really, really, really hope that you will be joining us in October on the Royal Caribbean ship, Wonder of the Seas. Let's go ahead to the birthday segment. Isaiah Santel was born on May 22nd and is forever 16. Tyron Carter was born on May 22nd and is forever 19. Andrew Ricken was born on May 22nd and is forever 35. Kyle Terry was born on May 24th and is forever 28. Jesse Wilfong was born on May 26th and is forever 20. Andrew LaPlante was born on May 27th and is forever 24. We celebrate with these families the day these children came into the world. We know their birthdays will always be a special day for each one of us. If you would like to have your child's birthday announced and shared with the other listeners of this podcast, I would love to be able to do that. All you have to do is go to gpshope.org slash birthdays. Just fill out that form with the information we need. Hit submit. Please make sure you include the pronunciation of your child's name if it gets mispronounced sometimes because I want to make sure I say it correctly. Like I said, just submit that form and we will announce your child's birthday the week of his or her birthday and Dave will also send you an email to remind you to listen that week. I do want to thank Lester and Kathy Wilfong again for sponsoring this episode in memory of their daughter, Jessie Wilfong. If you would like to sponsor an episode in memory of your child, either go to the store or the donate tab on our website, gpshope.org, and click on Sponsor a Podcast Episode. It's just a $50 donation to the Ministry of GPS Hope, which is where this podcast comes from, and you will have thousands of listeners remembering your child with you for years to come, and you get to select the week of the episode you would like to sponsor, and I'll put a link to this in the show notes as well. Grief and Laughter. Those two things seem to be total opposites, I know, especially when we feel like life is not worth living without our child here. Some of you are barely in survival mode, much less even remotely thinking that you could have a life of meaning and purpose again that includes joy and laughter. I really do hope and pray that you took to heart the things Nancy had to share with us today and maybe even listen to this episode again. Maybe you want to put it on your calendar to re-listen to it a month from now or three months or six months or even a year from now. Laughter is not just something we do based on our happiness or life circumstances. 
it's needed for our very survival and to help us get through the times we don't think we can and we will. So I want to encourage you to find ways to laugh or at least have that internal smile. And someday the true laughter will return and life will be worth living again. And as you learn how to combine laughter with your grief, remember to hold on. Pain eases. There is hope.